Hi guys, it is an unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in hell in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas where I'm here on this gorgeous Thursday morning May 3rd, 2017 so this is your old depressed collapsitarian starting his day starting his day so the first my first challenge of the day was to go into the back of my truck to find a a little uh can of propane i i don't know if anyone who might have seen the picture of my my bedroom inside the house last night this is the the picture of the back of my truck and uh this is the, the other half of the shit you didn't see in my bedroom. This is an absolutely glorious uh, picture of the inside of a depressed collapsitarian's brain. So anyway, guys, uh, this is going to be a whine. We're just going to whine. Your old depressed collapsitarian's going to whine as I'm uh, heading off to my 15 dollar an hour job uh, I'm putting uh, five years of college and real estate licenses in three states and a 148 IQ and, uh, to work here to make fifteen dollars an hour uh, well you'll actually get to see at the end of this if you stick around to the end of this you will actually see what I'm doing this is a job that no self-respecting 19-year-old Mexican that you'd find in the uh, parking lot of Home Depot would, would, would agree to take. They, any goddamn clueless moron would uh, I'd say go fuck off. Uh, Anyway, I need to be very careful about backing, but before I get into the wine, I'm just going to give you the, the I would like to say final chapter, the final chapter, but uh, there is no final chapter in life and hell uh, of my week. This is, so remember I started off my week on Monday getting laughed out of the, uh, laughed out of the, uh, Travis County, Texas property appraisal protest board. So I uh, got laughed out of That's how I started my day. So it was about noon Monday that uh, the last words you heard in my rant about the uh, Texas, I mean the Travis County thing, was that I was heading to a vehicle inspection place where I would turn in to spend 15 minutes and $18 getting my gas sucking truck inspected so I could get this little you know this fucking little piece of paper so I could get my uh, truck registered for another year with the uh, authorities well 48 hours and $750 later I got my little piece of paper I did I got my little piece of paper uh, two days of my life, $750. I was a good little slave and got my little piece of paper and I was finally, so this is about noon yesterday, I am uh, finally uh, through this nightmare. So I go to pay the, uh, the brake mechanic. Uh, Go to pay the brake mechanic, and I am done with this. Done with it. Once and for all and forever. Well, his, his credit card machine, I don't have a credit card, but I do have a debit card, so his debit card machine was broken. So he told me that, that I had to pay him in cash. Well, of course, I was $50 short in cash. So I had to go to the goddamn ATM with my debit card. So I leave the, leave the mechanic, go up there, get the 50 fucking dollars, 
and I come back see it, it's, it's damn hard getting in and out of this place because there's so many fucking cars parked everywhere and the parking lot you can I mean there's like one inch on either side of your own car so I come in there with my gas sucking truck with my cash money and I just thought, you know, I I actually told I'd already been in and out of this goddamn place twice. Uh, so I told myself, Hambone, I mean, this was literally this little voice saying, Hambone, just, just park here on the side of the road instead of negotiating this goddamn obstacle course of, of these vehicles and uh, give the guy his money so you can get on your way to make $15 an hour working like a, a goddamn slave uh, to pay the $750 that you have spent. So that would be 50 hours of work. Well, I've got $500 uh, worth of work. So anyway, I was only gonna be down 250 bucks by the time I finished slaving in the hot sun uh, for 50 hours, uh, but at least I would be uh, two-thirds two of the way there at only down 250. So I give the guy the money, we shake hands, I thank him, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I could feel the weight lifting off my shoulders for the first time in three days. I had this glorious feeling of uh, lightness. I get in my gas sucking truck. I put it in reverse. I step very slowly on the gas, looking out my mirror on the driver's side of my car, and I back out of the driveway, and we know where this story is going. Boom is where this story's going as I slam my uh, my 13 year old 200,000 mile banged up Toyota truck. It was the camper shell, the little corner of the camper shell sticking out. And what did I manage to hit? I managed to hit a brand new, I, I mean, right off the lot. I, a two, with this fucking dealer plate still on it, a 2017, a 2017, one of these giant monster trucks, and these giant Ford monster trucks, a, a, you know, my camper shell smashing into this thing was about halfway up the, uh, the quarter panel on the back of the truck. On one level, it was a glorious sound. If you've never heard the sound of a monster truck getting crunched by a little Japanese rice burner, it would have been a, a delicious sound if anybody on the planet except me had been making it. So there began my next nightmare. Well, it turns out that the uh, guy at the insurance company says, well, well, you know, it's a liability claim uh, so I don't have any, uh, I, I don't have any deductible. So I said, you mean I get off this spot free? And like, well, not, not, not exactly, Mr. Littletail, uh, that your record will now be deemed at five points. Uh, and I said, what does that mean? And he goes, well, depending on how they label the accident, and it sounds like it will be the smallest level of accident. Each point is $50. So I said, so I'm getting five points. I said, so this is costing me $250. And he goes, well, not, 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 not exactly. And I said, like, like, well, what are you talking about? So what, how they work this, how these fuckers at these insurance companies work this. So it's five points the first year and then it drops one point each year for five years. Are you following me? So when you add it all up, assuming it is $50 and not 75, which is the other uh, level of, of accident, 
uh, it adds up to a total of 15 points. So I am going to pay $750. $750 fucking dollars uh, over the, the life of this for backing in to one of these $50,000 fucking monster trucks in one second. In one second after in, enjoying the freedom of being done with this, and in one second I doubled the amount of money I have spent in the past three days from $750 to $1,500, otherwise known as, um, as uh, 100 hours of, of taking a job that any self-respecting Mexican would refuse. And uh, to say I'm driving to that job site. So anyway, I go out and and completely just uh, well you'll see in a minute uh, what I did yesterday afternoon to uh, make sixty five dollars to get into my one thousand five hundred dollar debt uh, Jesus fucking Christ so anyway so I get to the end of the day it is my my friend here in, in Austin who I'm staying with it is her 75th birthday her 75th birthday so all I was looking forward to guys is getting my ass home taking a shower and meeting up uh, with some friends uh, you, you know, to have a nice, have a nice meal. Look at that. This is where I should be is with these goddamn homeless people with their cardboard signs, uh, making some damn money today. So all I was looking forward to was a nice meal, a couple of uh, ice cold margaritas to celebrate my friend's 75th birthday. So. We, we, we were supposed to be meeting at this, uh, you know, at this, this restaurant. So, so I go home to take the shower and I see her car parked there. And I'm going, what the fuck? Why was her car? So I get there, walk in on this, uh, on my friend's 75th birthday, find her in tears on the, on the deck of her house. She had just run over her own cat leaving to go uh, to her birthday party on her 75th birthday she ran over her own cat if you're watching these videos you know she has two cats we're talking the long-haired cat you know the one with the big bushy tail so uh, but the cat he was still alive and he, and he went off in the in the damn woods you know back where all the coyotes live so this sets off we got Sancho Panza involved in this so I spent two hours combing the woods trying to find this mangled cat we never did find the cat uh, he's not back this morning uh, anyway he's probably coyote bait by now so uh, it Anyway, so that's what I did between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. And then, in, in the middle of all of all this, well, I've known this for several days. My buddy, uh, I won't I won't mention his name here. I, I've, I've talked about this guy. He's the he's he is not a clueless fucking moron. He's this buddy of mine who thinks Austin, Texas is pretty much going to be a ghost town in the next two to five years as the robots take over all the jobs of these clueless fucking moron little beautiful people techies. This guy is a techie himself. So anyway, he's in a coma on his deathbed. My, my friend is, while uh, I'm dealing with all of this shit, that I've been dealing with in my own puny little lives. He's been uh, going in and out of a coma. And uh, so obviously last night was, so uh, we go trucking down there 
you, you know, if you've ever been into one of these depressing fucking scenes at uh, in the hospital room, you know, where where all your friends are getting together, acting like that you're getting together for a beer when, when you're getting uh, together, uh, you know, to watch one of your friends die. And uh, so, that's, so I, that, that's how I got to spend about three hours to cap off uh, the first three days was looking at one of my friends, my age, this guy my age, you know, I was a little concerned when he didn't show up at the Old Settlers Music Festival a couple weeks ago. I knew something was amiss. And, you know, I saw him at, uh, at South by Southwest back in March. He was a, a damn good picker. Uh, he, had a, he had a showcase. Uh, just a few weeks ago here in South Austin up there playing guitar and dancing all around he's dead well I guess he's dead I don't know if he's dead or not uh, I hope he's dead I hope he's dead is uh, is, is all I can say so uh, anyway I want to bid farewell to my buddy you know just sitting there looking at him lying dead in, uh, in that hospital, well, might have, you know what I'm saying, in a coma. Uh, oh, Lord, you know, it made me, uh, made me think about things. Look at these wild turkeys. Uh, no, these are guinea hens. Get those guinea hens like that! And, uh, so this has been my life so far. So anyway, I'm heading back up. Uh, speaking of my non-clueless friends, so anyway, I'm I'm heading up the hill to uh, to this job site. Sancho Panza loves it out here. He loves it out here. So anyway, who I'm working for just to change the uh, for fifteen dollars an hour is another is a buddy of mine who we were actually, he's a real estate investor that I used to work with when I was a clueless fucking moron real estate agent. And um, this guy is not a clueless moron and I'm, I'm trying to get him to agree to an interview on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, which he is absolutely refusing to do. Uh, th this guy is, is absolutely opposed to uh, absolutely opposed to uh, to what I do with my life, you know. When he knew me, I was, you know, making a hundred thousand dollars a year working with real estate investors. He and I actually bought a foreclosure together. We were actually business partners in this real estate deal. So he's bought several houses from me and whatnot and he is just absolutely horrified by what I am doing with my life absolutely horrified and as I say he's not a clueless moron so what he's talking about uh, he's he believes that we're looking at basically a Mad Max future as he's saying, he's he has visions of the Vizsla Goths, uh, you know, holding him down and pulling his gold teeth out of his mouth. Uh, hopefully, that they will kill him before they start pulling his gold teeth out of his mouth. You know, and and he doesn't necessarily. He, he's not putting a date on anything. He's just saying, as I am, that all bets are off from here on out in this society and on this planet all bets are off and that this shit can come down any day now at any point this shit can come down and so what he's going to do is just is just go right about business, uh, go right about buying real estate and doing his work on the computer. But what he's saying and what I want to interview him about, I mean, I don't understand any of this shit. He might be able to explain it. He says there's some sort of, you know, this damn word algorithm, this AI 
algorithm based on these things that called bots and all of this shit. He claims that on the very day, but not before then, but on the very day that uh, this shit, that, that the shit really does hit the fan. You know what we're talking about. I mean, when Mad Max, when uh, ramps up on this planet, he says that we're going to have a few hours that the people at least plugged into the system, there's going to be a few hours notice on the very last day that it all comes down. And uh, that all of these goddamn one percenters and shit uh, are going to have a few hours to get their guilty fucking asses down in their bunkers, uh, their underground cities, uh, on their rockets to Mars that they're uh, working so hard to build. Now, he doesn't have a bunker or a rocket to Mars. But uh, he said he will know. He will be one because he's so tapped into this shit. I mean, he's really into this shit. And so he will know a few hours before the rest of us. And he says when it does come down, it will take a few hours for this entire fucking uh, house of cards to come tumbling down. And this guy, he's no clueless moron. But, but you, you know, he's, he's trying not to be a depressed collapsitarian. So as I, he's going right about his business, he was kind of joking about me doing this job for $15 an hour. He is absolutely horrified that uh, his, his former real estate uh, agent and an investor and advisor. So uh, he is, you know... He's telling me uh, to, to get back in, into real estate, you know, pointing out that a few years ago when this shit happened with, uh, with this, uh, this whole goddamn shit I've been dealing with uh, from the property tax protest and especially all this shit with this vehicle, with this inspection, and now with this wreck, uh, he goes ham bone. He goes, back in the day, he goes, if something like this had happened, you would have picked up the phone, you would have made some, one phone call and to your fucking accountant or your lawyer or your whatever and said, could you take care of this? And that would have been it. You would never have thought about it again. Like, like uh, Jesus Christ, dude, get over it. And, and I know exactly what, that's exactly what I would have done a few years ago. Uh, you, you know, when you're making $100,000 a year, you know, what's $1,500? You got 98500 more to go through. But, uh, you know, $1,500, that is 25%. Uh, pretty much of my, I mean, not counting my uh, my my silver in my uh, real estate. That you know, fifteen hundred bucks, guys. That's twenty percent of my annual income that I have spent in the last three days. And this it just goes to show why ninety nine percent of us are are are, are completely fucked. Completely, totally fucked. You, you know, you do everything you can to save a goddamn nickel. You know what I'm saying. Go through all of this shit to, to save a fucking nickel, and then in one second, in one second, uh, you, you just spent uh, $750, or in three days, you spent 50 You know what I'm saying? We're completely fucked. We are totally enslaved by this system. This is the reason we are a country and a planet of clueless fucking morons. Uh, I've, I've had this rant already. It, it's dealing with this shit. I mean, this shit has completely eaten three days of my life. And now I'm going to spend the next five days of my life before I get the fuck back to East Bumblefuck, you know, making $15 an hour working like a goddamn Mexican. So what this guy did, I see he's looking at me like, like, what are you doing down there, Hambo? Get your ass up here and get to work and get her done. 
So what he's done, he is, so he's trying to convince me to be a real estate agent uh, and challenging me. And I said, Laura, I'm, oops, you didn't hear that name. I, anyway, I said, uh, I said, I'm so done with it. And, and so he's calling bullshit on me. So here is the, uh, what he's dangled in front of me that that he's wants to buy a property out in Durango, Colorado. And he goes, Okay, Hamba, and I want to hear you say no to this. He he goes, What I want you to do is since you're since when he found out I was heading to New Mexico anyway, he said, I want you to spend three or four days in Durango, Colorado. Here is your assignment. Here is your assignment. I want you to go out there and bird dog for me bird dogging, uh, meaning find him a property. So he wants me to go ahead of him by a few days, scout out the landscape in Durango, Colorado. I know nothing. I have not been to Durango, Colorado since 1992. I know nothing about Durango, Colorado or the real estate market there. So the deal is this. I go out there to Durango, Colorado and pick out 10 houses for him to look at. And if he ends up buying one of the 10 houses that I pick out, he will hand me $1,000. $1,000, basically, what he's talking about is me riding around with some clueless fucking moron $100,000 a year real estate agent in Durango for three days, and he will hand me $1,000 and go, and uh, so say no to that. Well, of course. Take a wild guess what I said to that. You're goddamn straight I'm going to go out there to Durango, Colorado and bird dog for this man. Now, of course, if he doesn't uh, buy one of the ten houses, I find uh, he's going to give me a $200 kill fee for my, uh, for my time, which is about $15 an hour that I'm going to spend riding around in an air-conditioned car with a real estate agent. So you see how quickly I took his bait. But right now, I need to uh, get to work for this man and get her done. So we're going to just take a quick look at what, I, what he's doing today. His plan for today is to take his camper for his vehicle for his vehicle uh, inspection, his big old camper. All right, little dog, the little dog loves it up here. I mean, this guy, we're, we're, we're well, you saw the ride here. We are like one half a mile from one of the busiest streets in Austin, Texas, East Riverside Drive. And uh, good God, look at this. I mean, we might as well be out in the country on this gorgeous day. So here's what I'm up to. This is what I did yesterday for 15 bucks an hour. And uh, $65. So I've got $435 more to go. This is what uh, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing some planet nibbling. Look at this cleaning out and I'm just going all the way. These are cat briars. Cat briars, poison oak. Good. Sancho! I'm the man postman running over my dog. This is my life. My life in the briars. In the cat briars. It is a gorgeous day, high of 78 degrees. You should see the big old hawk sitting on the telephone pole. It is a gorgeous day here in the end times. And I need to get to work and make my $15 an hour being a good little slave in the global industrial economy before I see what awaits me tonight the sirens coming smoke him if you got him guys we are so fucked here's a picture of my hand this is my left hand I guess I could wear gloves this is this is 
one day of work. Here is the uh, the hand of uh, this is what the hand of a clueless fucking moron with five years of college and real estate licenses in three states looks like. As uh, I will be bloody within uh, the first ten minutes, there will be blood running down my arm as I bleed for fifteen dollars an hour, waiting for the uh, poison oak. To begin, say goodbye to my gas-sucking truck. Bye, guys.